October, the month where the leaves fall, the air chills, and you want nothing more but to curl up inside and make a freaking dragon costume. This is my friend Sasha. We were hanging out a few weeks ago talking about what we were gonna do for Halloween. The topic of doing a two-person costume came up, but we couldn't think of an idea that we thought was creative enough. A week later, I'm trying to go to sleep and tossing ideas around in my head when it hits me. A ridiculous, weird, but most importantly, novel idea. So I call Sasha over and I try to explain. And we have to like hold on to each other. And so our torsos are off the ground with our legs on the ground and we have two legs in front, two legs in back. And we like walk along. But at a certain point, I just have to demonstrate. The idea is that we would combine our bodies by lying in opposite directions on top of each other. Our legs would become the four legs of some sort of lizard creature. Sasha's head would be the actual head and my head would be a tail. Thankfully, Sasha and I are pretty comfortable with each other, so this wasn't too awkward. Three, two, two one. Look. Okay, can you lift your hands up? No. Yes, you can. Look. Oh my god, we're a lizard. Oh, shit. Yeah, right? <laughs> when I first came up with the idea, I very optimistically thought that we would be able to stand up and walk forward, and you can see how that went. Okay, right leg. Right. <laughs> so we opted for sliding along the floor using our feet. I'm like, since it's a lizard, your arms could even be used to make like a frill, you know, like that dinosaur from Jurassic Park. But then we looked up what that lizard was actually called and it's a Chlamydosaurus. And we were like, uh, nah. Like what, like what, like who names a lizard that? Moving on. Then it was like, duh, your arms can be wings. It's a dragon. And we high fived and the clouds parted and the sun shone brightly upon us. Just kidding. It's October in Seattle and everything is cold and wet. Anyway, we got to work shopping for clothes and crafting materials. I decided black was the best color for the body since we could blend together more easily. Nice. So we went out to get black long sleeve shirts, pants, and gloves. The best part was probably when I had to test different sweatshirts to figure out which was the best for sliding along the floor. Once we had all the materials, Sasha had to go to work because she has a normal job, and I decided the best place to start would be the tail, which I wanted to stuff. I've never made a stuffed animal or anything before, but I felt like I had the basic idea of how it was supposed to work, so what could go wrong? I cut out a cone four feet long with the wide side the same length as the circumference of my head, plus some extra fabric to form a hood so I could wear it from my head when I wasn't in dragon mode. We decided red would be the best accent color, so I cut a bunch of triangles out of red foam to be spikes along the tail. Then I folded the cone in half and sewed the triangles into the seam a few inches apart, pointy side inward so they would stick out once it was flipped right side out. Honestly, this part was kind of stressful. The fabric kept bunching up weirdly, and again, this was my first time doing this, so I really had no idea if it was going to work. Once I finished the main seam, I curved it to become the hood section, and then got to work flipping it right side out and getting ready to do stuff to it. Since the tail starts out so small, I had to stuff it a little bit at a time, and I improvised a little stuffing tool out of mechanical pencil to help me along. I intentionally left extra foam on the spike triangles so that they would extend down into the tail, and I could put stuffing on either side of it to reinforce the spikes and keep them pointing straight out of the tail. Didn't know if this would work. Again, no idea what I'm doing but it made sense in my head. So throughout this, you can see me being very careful to stuff on both sides of the foam equally. Also, it was after I stopped needing the mechanical pencil that I discovered that the bag of stuffing comes with a stuffing tool. Honestly, it gave me flashbacks to finding toys in the bottom of my cereal box as a kid. As I got further and further through doing the tail, I started to realize that this actually might be working and I was honestly kind of surprised. And I started to think that maybe this costume would come together after all. For the back of the dragon, I cut out a thin piece of fabric that split into a Y and attached Velcro to the ends of the Y to let it clasp around a neck. Made three more spikes out of thicker foam, attached them to a perpendicular base so they would point straight out, then put them through some slits and hot glued them in place. Sure enough, felt like a monster, just as planned. Next I got to work on the head, which was basically a carving project. I've only done very limited sculpting in the past, but I've watched Bobby Duke do it plenty of times, so again, what can go wrong? I got this piece of foam from my Facebook hive mine and it seemed like the perfect density for the head. The only problem is it wasn't quite thick enough so I had to glue two pieces together. After testing a couple different glues with the foam, I settled on five minute epoxy, making sure to weigh it down with something heavy to ensure maximum adhesion. While the glue was drying, I sketched out the shape of the dragon head I wanted on the foam. I didn't want anything too crazy, just a basic dragon head, something that looked approachable, yet if you pissed it off, it might kidnap your princess, that sort of look. I got underway by cutting off the large chunks with the biggest saw I could find making sure to always redraw my lines before doing the next cut. For the actual sculpting, I switched to using an oscillating multi-tool, which I never thought I would use for this, but it actually turns out it's perfect. I started by following the lines I drew as closely as possible, constantly redrawing them. But once it got to the point where it actually started looking like a dragon head, I started worrying less about following strict lines and just started cutting where it felt right, letting the piece speak to me and following its commands like there was a dragon inside just waiting to get out and all I had to do was listen. Eventually the foam and I merged souls and became one space and time with our united, unlimited, unified, amid a cloud of low density polystyrene dust. Point is I got it done. I took the head outside to give it a couple coats of black spray paint so it would match the rest of the body. Pro tip, when you're doing a big spray paint project, let the spray painted pieces dry inside your bedroom. This makes your room smell like toxic fumes, which ensures that you won't 
won't be tempted to take a nap instead of working. Time for finishing touches. I found this glittery red foam at the craft store, which was perfect for the eyes. I tested out eye locations using sewing pins and then hot glued them in place once I found where I liked them. Regular red foam became the nostrils and I cut some more styrofoam into shiny horns. I added an elastic head strap and then some black fabric to hide the rest of Sasha's head to make sure that the dragon illusion would be untarnished. Take out your Buffalo Wild gift card because it is time for some wings. We got this shimmery silver cloth since it would stand up from the body and we could still accent it with red. After going through a couple different designs for wings, I settled on this one and used the T-square and some trigonometry to figure out the right dimensions. I legit used a sign function for the first time in like five years. Honestly couldn't believe I remembered how Sokotoa worked. Also, can we talk about how hard it is to lay out designs on fabric? It's so hard to make sure it's square. Every time I move something to try to straighten it out, everything else goes diagonal or squiggly and it's impossible to be confident I have it right. Anyway, I did my best to cut it out and then I used it to make a duplicate of itself. At this point, Sasha and our friend Cam arrived to help out, so we really got cooking. We sewed a curtain rod seam along the top of the wing, which would help it accept the two feet of dowel that would support the wing and let it flap. I cut wing accents out of more red foam and glued them down to the wing. Sasha attached Velcro, and Cam started working on making feet for the dragon. I estimated we would be done by 9 p.m. that night, but things always take longer than I think they will. We were up till one in the morning sewing, gluing, and tweaking until we finally had a functional prototype. We aligned and attached the wings velcro straps to Sasha's shirt, got dressed with all the pieces, and finally, at 1.11 in the morning, we were ready to test. Oh, and the next day we found this at a thrift shop, so we knew what we had to do. 